Hi everybody and welcome to Cooking with Chelsea. I'm Chelsea, an admin assistant at the front desk for the Center of International Studies and Programs. But that's not all I do. I also enjoy cooking and I wanted to share one of my favorite recipes with you guys, a candy recipe my family has been making every year for the holidays for as long as I can remember. It's peanut brittle. Except you don't spend two hours on a stove top slaving over cooking sugar. Now this recipe we're gonna make in the microwave. All right, first things first. We need to go over the tools you need to make this recipe and the ingredients. First things first, you need a cookie sheet. This is important because it'll give you a place to pour your hot candy to set without it being in the way and without you getting burnt. Next, you need either a towel or some oven mitts. Whenever you're working with hot food or specifically hot sugar, make sure you have something to protect your hands. Your safety and well-being are paramount for us here at CISP. You'll also need a spatula or a wooden spoon. This is going to help you to stir the mixture without hurting yourself. Next, you absolutely need a microwavable bowl. Do not do a plastic bowl, it will melt. Next for the ingredients, we have one cup of white sugar already measured into our microwavable bowl. Please use white sugar because other sugars may not react the same way as white sugar and you also won't be able to tell properly if it's done based on color. It's not peanut brittle without peanuts. So in this bowl I have one cup of dry, roasted, unsalted peanuts. Please get unsalted because the salt on the peanuts can keep the candy from properly adhering and it's not peanut brittle if all your peanuts fall out. <laughs> then we have one tablespoon of salted butter half a cup of light corn syrup, as you can see here. All of these ingredients are available at your local grocery store. We also have one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and very important, one teaspoon of baking soda. One last tool you may need is the apron. Often when you're cooking, it can get really messy, and candy has this tendency to splatter, and it's very, very hard to get off of most fabrics. An apron, which is very cheap, you can get them on Amazon, at Walmart, you can even make your own. They're very, very easy. They protect your clothes so that you're not crying about it later. Okay, very first step, we are going to grease our cookie sheet. This is important because otherwise the candy will hold on to the cookie sheet, and you won't be able to take it off, break it up, and eat it. That's kind of the whole point of this video. So you're going to take the rest of your stick of butter. I do this because it's easier than getting out the oil or the nonstick spray, but you can use either one of those too. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the stick of butter and just slide it along, giving it a quick layer to make sure that nothing sticks. You can also go up the sides. I don't because I don't usually make a batch big enough, but if you're making a double batch or even a triple batch, go up the sides to make sure that it does not stick to your container. Okay. Our next step, we're going to take our half a cup of light corn syrup and we're going to pour it into our one cup of white sugar. Use your spatula to scrape it out of the measuring cup to make sure that you get every last bit of it into the bowl. This is important because if you don't have the right amounts, the candy isn't going to come out properly. Once you've got that all scraped out, go ahead and mix your sugar and your cornstarch completely together. It's going to look kind of like a semi-white blob and a little messy. I promise it tastes a lot better than you'll think. As you mix, some of the sugar mixture is going to stick to the spatula. Go ahead and just scrape that against the side of the bowl because you want all of it in your candy and not down the sink. Your mixture should look like this when you're done. Try to get as much sugar incorporated as possible because it will make your candy better. I know it doesn't look like much now. I promise it's gonna taste really good at the end. Okay, now that that's mixed, our mixture is going to go right into the microwave. That's going to cook for four minutes on high. Cooking it for four minutes is important because if the sugar doesn't get to a high enough temperature, it won't set properly and your candy won't turn out well. Okay, four minutes out. You wanna make sure, always have a towel or an oven mitt, okay? We do not want to burn ourselves. Your sugar should look like this, sort of molten and with lots of bubbles in it. Make sure you work fast because your sugar will cool fairly quickly. Next, add your one cup of dry roasted unsalted peanuts and your tablespoon of salted butter. Then make sure you give those a really, really good mix until all the butter is melted and all the peanuts are incorporated. You'll feel a little resistance from the sugar just because it's starting to harden. Part of what the butter does is it keeps your candy from turning into the hard candy that you have to suck on and instead makes this a little more chewable, which is what we want in our peanut brittle. 
I'm just going to keep stirring. Make sure you scrape your sugar up off the side of the bowl, making sure that every little bit of sugar gets some butter in it and that all of your peanuts are completely covered in the sugar mixture. Just a little more. Okay. That looks pretty properly mixed. When you're working with this, again, scrape down your spatula to make sure you get every little bit in the bowl. And then, because you don't want to have dried sugar or hot set sugar that you're going to clean off the counters later, make sure to leave it somewhere that it's easier to clean up. Then, with your towel or your oven mitts, it should look a little like this. It's starting to look like peanut brittle now, huh? We're going to put it back in the microwave for three and a half to four minutes. What you're looking for here is to make sure that your peanut brittle is golden brown in color because that tells you that the sugar is properly cooked. So, three and a half, let's go. Make sure you watch your sugar at this stage because it's going to cook a little differently every single time. You want to go by the dark golden brown color and not by the numbers on the microwave. Okay, so our peanut brittle is just about done. You can smell the peanuts wafting through the house. Make sure, as always, oven mitts or towel. When you take the peanut brittle out, it should look this nice golden brown color. Make sure you work fast, otherwise you're gonna be left with nothing. You're gonna throw in your teaspoon of vanilla, your teaspoon of baking powder, or baking soda. soda. Make sure that you only mix it enough to incorporate it because you want all those lovely bubbles in your candy. Don't mix it until the bubbles are gone. Once that's just incorporated, it's gonna look a little like that. Make sure working fast, closing the microwave, you're going to pour this mixture onto your greased cookie sheet from earlier. Use your spatula, scrape it as quickly as you can because you don't want it hardening in the bowl, you want it where you can eat it. And it hardens quick. Already, it's already starting to cool. You're going to put it on the cookie sheet, spread it out a little. Get off as much as you can, scrape your spatula on the side. All right, put that aside, so be careful about your hands. And then because the cookie sheet is cool, I can pick it up without my hands. Don't touch the bottom, it will be hot. Your peanut brittle is gonna look a little like this. That's okay. Put it aside somewhere cool for about 10 to 15 minutes and let it set. Next, let's talk cleanup. Anytime you're working with candy, cleanup is going to be a little bit difficult, so make sure that you have a ready supply of hot water as this will help you melt the sugar and get it out of your bowl. It's much easier to clean as you work, so once you're done with any of the bowls, make sure they go straight into the sink to stay out of your way. Now, you can see some of our candy is still stuck to the bowl. We're going to have to clean that all the way out before we use it, so that's going to go into the sink and we're going to start running the hot water. This will help us melt all of the candy still in the bowl. There we go, clean and ready for the next batch. Okay, now for my last and favorite part. We're gonna take our finished peanut brittle, which is hard and it's not moving, and it's cool to the touch. And we are going to literally, this is why we greased our cookie sheet. There we go, you have one giant slab of peanut brittle. Now, if you're anything like the rest of my family who can eat peanut butter with a spoon straight from the jar, I can just hand this to them and we're good to go. For the rest of us who maybe like peanut butter and peanuts a little bit, but don't want quite that much, we're going to do my favorite part of this, break it. All you have to do is press down the middle and then start snapping your peanut brittle into more manageable pieces. Make sure to snap the whole thing and as you do this, make sure your hands are completely dry. The one thing that sugar in all its forms does not like is moisture. So once you've washed your hands, dry them, dry them, dry them. Oh, a towel comes in handy for something else, doesn't it? So, as you'll notice, this peanut brittle has a lot of bubbles. That's what makes this recipe so delicious, because it doesn't break your teeth when you bite into it. Once you're done breaking all the pieces up into more manageable chunks, you can just store these in a Ziploc bag, and they'll keep for a couple of weeks. They don't last that long in my house, but it's the thought that counts, right? Thank you so much for doing this recipe with me. If you liked it, let us know at SIS because we want to make what you want to watch. At the same time, if you have any recipe requests, let us know. You can always email us at cisp at csusb.edu. We look forward to hearing from you. Stay safe, coyotes.